Hi, hello, um, this is Dr. Quack, and I am vlogging. Vlog. Um, I've never done this before. <laughs> I, you know, mm, yeah, this is, uh, this is gonna be for the Nick and Avery vlogs, which somehow I just kind of got shoehorned into in the profile picture, even though I haven't made any vlogs yet. So, um, I'm gonna try to start doing that, but I'm not very good at it, because I'm not used to just pointing a camera at myself and rambling on about things. The way, uh, the way Avery and Nick have been doing it, though, is they just kind of, like, film themselves throughout the day, like, whenever they're doing something interesting, and just kind of describe what they're doing, or, like, get people to talk to them and make witty banter and stuff. So, uh, uh I'll try to keep this interesting, or as interesting as I can, but, hooray for vlogs. First steps. Um, I just got back from seeing, uh, Sherlock Holmes, the new one, uh, Game of Shadows, and... I was pleasantly surprised by how good it was, because from what the reviews said, um, they made it seem like it was just like a watered-down version of the first movie, and it was too heavily focused on action, and the action scenes looked like crap, and I didn't even like the first movie. I mean, I know, like, it got, it got praise, like, people said it was pretty good, but I wasn't impressed, and I had a hard time keeping up with it, and all in all, I was just, like, really bored at the end of it. But, um, Game of Shadows, I, I thought it was good. The action scenes were well done, and there weren't as many of them as the reviews made it sound like. There were some, but they didn't dominate the film. Like, most of it was them just trying to figure out the case and solving the crime and doing intellectual stuff. And there was some fighting, and it was cool. The fighting was cool. It was, it was a good break from all the thinking and all of the talking. It's like, no, I want to see some people get punched in the face. We can think later. So, yeah, Game of Shadows was good. You know, it's not phenomenal, but I liked it better than the first movie. I guess just because um, the plot was easier to follow, because I'm not very good when it comes to smart movies. Yeah, Game of Shadows was good. Like, I liked it a lot better than the first one, and it, just, it was a lot more interesting, and there was a lot going on, and it was all just great fun. So, yeah, I saw Game of Shadows, and, uh, oh, that's right. I got a new Genesis game, Virtual Pinball. Ooh, look at it. Yeah, um, I got this off of Amazon for like two bucks. Shipping was more than the game. And um, so I really like it because the whole premise behind this game is not just pinball, it's designing and playing your own pinball tables, which I found really impressive, like for the Sega Genesis. Like it's got good memory capacity and it lets you create all your own tables. It's, it was unexpected, but what I always thought was funny about, um, this is, this is an electronic arts game. What I always thought was funny about the electronic arts cartridges is like, hold on. Like, take a standard, uh, Genesis game. Like, see, here's a, here's a Genesis game, Rocket Knight Adventures, ex excellent game. And you see the cartridge size and the way everything looks. And then, um, here's an electronic arts cartridge. <laughs> How come they get to be so big? <laughs> I mean, understandably, like, the 32X cartridges are fatter, you know, because they held more data. But the Electronic Arts cartridges, like, they're still just played on the regular Genesis. And it's almost like a narcissistic thing. So when you've got all your Genesis games lined up, the Electronic Arts cartridges, like, tower over all the other games. Like, oh, here are your Electronic Arts games, the true quality of Sega Genesis. It's it's unfair how they get to tower over everyone, but it's a good game. And the other one is a crew ball. Two pinball games. I wonder if Electronic Arts made any games on the Genesis other than pinball. Oh. Oh, hello. Hi. Let's pop this baby in and see if I can show it off. Boop. And I try to create sort of a, a goal-oriented pinball table. Like, here, here's the idea. You start off here, you launch your ball, it bounces around in all these bumpers, and then it falls down here. And then your goal is to hit it to this ramp, bring it down over here, mess around with it, hit it up to this ramp, light all three of these lights, hit it up into this tiny little pocket up here, and then it gets drained down to this portal where it falls onto the jackpot, which is a million points, and then launches you back up and then back down here to the other table so you can keep playing. It's, um, my goal was to make it really difficult to get that jackpot. So as the tables go, there's all kinds of distractions to prevent you from progressing, and the gap between the flippers gets wider with each one until eventually the top one has really tiny flippers and a very large track that takes you to your doom. And um, I succeeded. This game is hard as a butt. 
I have yet to even get the jackpot. I've come close a couple times. I stayed up until 4 in the morning playing this. I must have played it like 30 times, and I was never able to beat it. So, mission accomplished. This game is terrible, and it's torture. So, yeah, um, I guess that's really all the stuff I have to talk about right now. Um, I'm going to try to keep these vlogs going. Like, um, I'm starting my second semester of college next week, so I'm going to try to remember to just, like, periodically throughout my college days just talk to a camera for a few minutes. I mean, I'll probably try to bring my friends into it and be like, look, here's a friend of mine. I have friends. And, you know, we'll see if anything interesting comes out of that. So, uh, keep up the good work, Avery and Nick. Keep them vlogs coming, and, uh, I will try to be a valuable asset to the Nick and Avery Vlogs Corporation in the future. This has been Dr. Quack. See you then. I, I can't see anything. <laughs>